Hi, I'm Jason with Nightly Creations. This week's video is going to be focusing on the half Persian 4 in 1. Much like the European 4 in 1, this is one ring woven into four different ones to create a flat piece of nice, beautiful chainmail jewelry. So let's head over to the bench and give it a shot. All right, I see you've made it back to the desk. Now, at the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to have your very own length of Persian 4 in 1. And we're going to be going through that today. So you're only going to need a few materials to get started. So let's go ahead and head over to that materials page. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we need. We need two sets of pliers. I'm currently using Zeron bent nose pliers. You can use a bread tie if you'd like to identify one end of your weave that you're working on. It's not necessary, but some people find it helpful. Then you have 40 rings that we're going to be working with here. I, you can have as many rings as you want or as few. All depends on what you're trying to accomplish during this tutorial. So for this, I have 20 open rings and 20 closed rings. They're different colors purely for the purpose of making it easier to see on video. You can, of course, have it all one color. You can have each ring a different color. Uh, play to the sound of your own music there, so no problem at all. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, just moving those out of the way. I'm also going to zoom in here to help everybody see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and start with one of our open rings. And let's go ahead and toss on three close rings. And then we're going to close that up. All right. So the way I like to get started is by pulling each side of the rings away from you. So you have one ring on the left, one ring on the right, and then one dangling pointing towards you in the center. And then what you're going to do is you just want to sandwich that middle one in between. So I push it behind the left one and on top of the right one. And then I have the, the ring, our closed ring from before, tilted up and away from me. So it is pointing this way. And so holding that between your fingers, it's going to get a little tricky to start out with, but that's okay. We're going to take one gold ring, or one open ring rather, and we're going to go through the little eyelet created there, being careful not to go through the gold ring. The gold ring and the red rings never touch, so or never go through each other rather. That was poorly explained, I apologize. The gold rings don't go through the gold rings, and the red rings won't go through the red rings. So now that we've pushed our gold ring, our open ring, through our closed rings here, before we loop it through this final one on the right-hand side, let's add in another ring. Simple as that. Yep. Maybe not so simple. There we go. And you want to twist it through. And you can hold it by one ring, that's perfectly fine. And let's go ahead and close this sucker. There we go, we're nice and close. Now, this is the point where you've dropped it. And if you were like me on my first try, you're having a panic attack, sobbing on the floor, but that's all right. So we're going to go ahead and figure out where we were. So. If you hold one side of this and hold the other, it just comes into play. So all you have to do is find that one on either side. One is completely unattached, and the other one is on two different rings. And you see it has these two red rings over here at one angle, and then we have our gold rings. And the red rings are the ones we're wanting to pay attention to. So if you remember, we just want to orient this the, the way we had it before. So I 
hold on either side. Nope, not the right ring. There we go. There's our right ring. And then I'm just going to put it on the, the table here. And then I'm going to figure out which way it was. So if you remember, if, there we go. If you look at it, so previously it was just like this. Now the ring, the closed, the closed rings that we were adding are going in the right direction. All we need to do is flip the gold and pick it back up. So here you go. We have our steps going from up, from the left to the right, and then we have our gold ring. So let's go ahead and hold that in our fingers. We're going to take this open ring again. And let's not use my fat fingers. Let's do some flyer work here. We're going to go through the eyelet created by these two rings. Remember, we're trying not to loop in the previous open ring. We want to make sure we include that one. So we're going to add another ring. Scoot it through with our fingers. There we go. Let's make that a little better. There we go. Now that you're adding more, the confusion that you will see if you let go of it should be significantly less. To try and help you out there, Let's go ahead and add a little bread tie here. So I'm holding it in my right hand again. And we are going to loop through. I have the first two rings of the first closed and the first open ring that we had. And that's going to help keep things a little more organized. So let's go ahead and keep going. So once again, uh, there's that eye created by these two rings here. And you can always tell because the previous ring that you gave went through this ring here. So you never want it to go through the same ring at this, uh, in a row. So you never want to see this. You always want your open and closed rings separated by a ring. So we're going to push that through. Going to add in here our ring. And you can do it easy just with that. Flip over our other ring. Yep. Dangers of being pet fingered. Okay, now you can close that out, shake it out a little bit, and it corrects itself, right? So let's keep going the way we, we want. So once again, that's that stair pattern is still going. So if we hold it up, stairway to heaven, going to the right. So let's add another one. Once again, you add a closed ring at the end. And all I'm doing is grabbing either side of that gold ring and twisting. There we go. Let's go ahead and close this ring. And then you just keep going. So through the eyelet between those two rings. Add in a second ring in the back. Twist it through. And close the ring. Okay. Once again, not using my fat fingers. 
going to push this open ring through the eyelet of those two, not going through our previous previously added ring. Add a new ring. Close. Then you just rinse and repeat. Just keep on doing the exact same thing over and over again. That's the beauty of chain now. You can basically do it wherever you are. It's just a rinse and repeat cycle. So do things a couple dozen, couple hundred, couple thousand times, and you end up with a beautiful piece of work. Now the rings I'm using are anodized aluminum, but you can use any metal you want. I'm also using 16 gauge 5 16 rings. Uh, you can use a variety of different gauges and sizes. You just want to maintain that same aspect ratio. And see, there you go. You're creating quite a bit of a nice weave there. Nice and thin, a little thick, but nothing wrong with that. Once again, the eyelet. Looping over, adding one in the back. And closing. Oh, and you can tell I did something. Oh, never mind. I didn't do it wrong. I got pinched. So let's show you what that looks like. So here, it looks like I put a ring in the wrong spot. I actually feared that I flipped up the previous ring before adding it. And it turns out I didn't. It just got stuck. So all I have to do is flip that over. And voila. So let's go another time or two through this. We won't use all 20 rings, but... So we went through the eyelet, through the eyelet created. We're going to add a ring in the back, shimmy that forward, and stop it. Or close it, not stop it. OK, now. We're once again going through the eyelet created there, adding in another closed ring, and spinning it around and closing it. So let's take a closer look at this. So, as you can see, every gold ring here does not go through another gold one. They're completely separate. And so that's why I keep on stressing when you're going through that eyelet of the previously added rings, that you don't go through the one that you just closed. And then the red ones also don't go through each other. They're basically two independent chains woven together. That's the way you can think of it. So that's the, the end of this tutorial. If you had any problems with this tutorial, let me know. We can work something out to where we do some more tips and tricks, or if there's another video you'd like to see, you know, let me know. So let's go ahead and take a look at that outro. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like button, and then leave us a note in the comments about what you would like to be able to see in the future. And then, Subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified the moment your suggestion goes live. Remember, YouTube is not our only social media outlet, so check us out in other areas, and we look forward to seeing you out there. Have a good day.